Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Cash Gamer, and welcome back to another video on Civilization VI. And today, I want to talk about navies. Now, I am a very, very, very big fan of navies in this game. I totally like love using navies. They're really, really, really powerful. Um, I, I, I think that I prefer militaristically the civilizations that have powerful navies over the ones that have powerful military melee units. And that makes me not pick the powerful navy ones because I they're, they're like too easy for me to play. They're really, really easy to play. I think England's one of my favorite civilizations be because of their navy alone, you know? Not the fact that settling people on other continents gives you bonuses. So, using navies, um, they're definitely really, really, really valuable. Um, you can protect your embarked units, you know, and you can attack cities in different ways. Um, the Navy units have, they're really the first units you're going to get that have three range. You know, three, three range is a big deal because you can't get shot at from a city if you have three range. And you can also use them kind of like siege engines in a way. Now I think siege engines overall, they definitely, against walls and cities, they're there. But with siege engines, they come at a cost against, um, land units. You know, they're not very good against land units. Whereas naval units that are ranged are pretty good against land units for the cost of um, not doing as much damage to cities, but the battleships and missile cruisers, you can get promotions that do more damage against district defenses. You can get a lot more damage against district defenses. And then you can also get a lot more damage against land units, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty good. I like how the navy units are balanced where they have to be in friendly territory to heal and to heal Outside, you need to get a level 3 promotion. I think that's pretty good balancing, but dude, if you have the chance to build a powerful navy, do it. That is what, like, in Gathering Storm, if I'm going to spend oil on military units, I'm going to spend it on my navy. I'm not going to spend it on my land army. Same with coal. I don't even know if there is land units that use coal. Eh, if there is, I'm not going to spend my money on them. I'm going to spend it on ironclads or frigates. No, frigates are nighter. I'm gonna spend on ironclads. The downside to the navies, though, is that, you know, they're stuck in the water. Um, you know, they have extra movement, which helps them not, you know, helps them, you know, they're stuck in the water, but they have extra movement. But, you know, navies, they are all kind of situational as well, because if you're playing on a Pangea map, you definitely need, you know, navy's not gonna help you as much as on an archipelago, where you need a navy. You absolutely need one, you know. And what's nice is you can use naval units to capture cities as well, like the melee ones. And do coastal raids, like, super dope. I think that navies, um, they haven't been as useful as they have been in Civ 6. I think Civ 5 they were all right. But I know in Civilization 2 and 3, I really never used boats. I never ever used boat-based units. Um, Civ 5, I barely did, and you know, Civ 6 now, you got the aircraft carriers and nuclear weapons, and, and there's aircraft carriers always, but I think in this game, yeah, if you can, build yourself a powerful navy and use it to conquer the world. So, that's it. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I'll see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or Instagram post of whatever I decide to make.